In early September 2023, Ludia added the 93 Classic T-Rex to their game, basically advertising the Red Rex that can only be found in Target made by Mattel. And it got me thinking, if Ludia is now going to be advertising Mattel's toys, then why can't Mattel make toys to advertise Ludia's game? Sorry, games plural, because this video, I'm gonna try and make an entire line, like you know how there's like, there's the, the Dino Rivals, and the Dino Escape, and right now we have Dino Trackers, and soon we're gonna get Epic Evolution. What if I made my own line, entirely made of hybrids from Jurassic World Alive and Jurassic World The Game? And that's basically uh, what I, I did, I would have done this sooner, but uh, I was on vacation at the time, so we're doing this now. Now the line we'll be making today will consist of attack packs, the special attacker guys that are basically attack packs with gimmicks, the Rorovores, the massive biters, the special line, and a playset, which is basically dinosaur plus a uh, vehicle or other dinosaurs. Now first things first, we're gonna start off with our attack packs. These are consisted of the smallest dinosaurs and non-dinosaurs. Their articulation is usually quite limited, although recently they have added these uh, lovely little ball joints to most of the dinosaurs. Now, the, the articulation is also limited to the mouth, the hands, which just, which just move back and forward, as well as the legs. And you can also rotate the tail, but no one cares about this kind of tail rotation. Paint job is also very lacking on these guys. They don't even have painted toenails. Now this line always, and I mean always, has a Velociraptor to sell alongside it. So of course, our line has to have one of the hybrid raptors, and this time around I'm gonna choose Pyritator. As these raptors are usually quite limited in everything, I decided to use one of the lesser popular raptors in the game, and Pyritator is the first one that comes to mind. Recently, we've got some synapsids in Dimetrodon and the new Adaphosaurus. Oh wait, oh this is an attacker. This isn't a- oh sorry, I, I could have sworn this was like a, one of the attack packs, but it's actually from the second line. But either way, we're, we're, we're filling this guy in for like a regular attack pack dinosaur. Because uh, my next option for an attack pack is Alberto Savia, which is basically Dimetrodon with an Albertosaurus head. So basically imagine it would be like this, except the head would only be on a ball joint and that tail would not be as rotatable. I completely forgot this dude even was like a special attacker guy. Or what, I, I don't, I really don't know what the next line is called. But either way, we're uh, saying this is like an attack packer. Although I'm now just realizing the Alberto Savia has a really cool color scheme, but then it would be very simplified when it comes to an attack pack toy, so yeah. Pterosaurs have been getting a lot of love in the attack pack lately, so I threw off one in my one of my own, which is uh, Dimodactylus. There are a lot of pterosaur hybrids in these games, but uh, Dimodactylus has a lot of uh, relevancy in Jurassic World Alive, and people have been demanding a hybrid for it for ages now. So I figured it, it, it we'll give it some mo a bit more love by throwing it in as a toy. Okay, I know this is a, a battle damage kind of dinosaur, but it's uh, it's the only Gallimimus I have, which is filling in for the dinosaur, the, the last dinosaur for the attack packs, which is the Proceratomimus. Of course, I'm going to plug in one of my favorite dinosaurs from the game. I know that a lot of people hate it because of uh, what it was like in the past, but I always liked it because it just looked very pretty. It was a very, very good looking dinosaur, and I really hope that one day it does get a hybrid. So until then, we're adding it to our fictional line as one of the cheaper dinosaur toys. Now we get to our mini attackers, which I'm just gonna call them mini attackers because I don't remember what they're actually called. These are basically, again, smaller dinosaurs, but they usually have like some extra details, like uh, better, be they actually have the ball jointed arms, which, and uh, probably some pivoting, oh no, this one doesn't. But usually they have a little more extra detail, as you can see this blue has a lot better paint deco than previous blues that you've probably seen elsewhere on the attack packs. And their nails are sometimes painted. But what differentiates, differentiates uh, what makes these guys different from the other guys is that they have some sort of gimmick attached to them. Now, this time around, we actually do have some Jurassic World The Game representation because I was originally gonna get, add Alloraptor, 
when I thought I was going to do this video just for Jua, but then I decided to throw in the game hybrids as well because I knew people were going to ask for them anyway, so I replaced Alloraptor with its superior counterpart, Carnoraptor. I mean, you, you can decide if you like Carnoraptor or Alloraptor more, they're both. Although I think Carnoraptor came first, so it makes sense that he, that he gets a toy first. And of course, since these dinosaurs are usually higher quality, or at least a bit level up from usual attack packers, so it makes sense that Carnoraptor would get a lot more detail than the other dinosaurs. Still no painted nails though, unfortunately. Another one from Jurassic World the game, we got Gorgosuchus, which I originally added because it was in Jua, but then I remembered, wait, this can also act as a Jurassic World the game reference as it was in that game first. So, yes, Gorgosuchus sporting the original colors, because the level 1 colors are actually really good. You don't really need to change it all that much. The next dinosaur fitting for this line is Draco Ceratops. Everyone, another dinosaur that ter used to terrorize the meta. But uh, now, for, for, the, for its gimmick here, of course, I didn't even mention the gimmicks. Dang it, I'm so out of practice. So, of course, for the raptors, it'll probably be like uh, the regular, you, you swing, you swish that and it bites. Of course, there's another raptor, if I can find it, where you push a button on its back and it swings its claws around. Either one of those could work. And I don't even remember if the po- I don't even know what the Postosuchus' gimmick was because I never found that Postosuchus, so you tell me how that works. And of course, Draco Ceratops will just have this, uh, bopping animation. And lastly, plugging in another one of my favorites, we're gonna have Quetzorion. This is an absolutely beautiful looking dinosaur from the game, and his gimmick will just be this again. And of course, I would want my Quetzalcoatl to be in this line because I wanted to have the biting gimmick and for it to actually have the superior ball joint arms that the attack packs are known for. I mean, the, the advanced attack packs, I don't know what these things are called. Ah. Okay, but enough small fry. Let's talk big. Well, medium, honestly. The Roarivores are very self-explanatory. They have some sort of gimmick that lets them open their, let, just lets them uh, speak louder than I can. So the first carnivore I chose is Majundasuchus because I wanted to include at least one rare hybrid and Majundasuchus is one of the more popular of the it was actually the one of the first rare hybrids so it made sense to give it justice and of course you know I love Triostrotic so of course I'm gonna include it in this line as for the roaring gimmick I never actually thought of what it would be I honestly think this is one of the better gimmicks we could get like it's a very basic uh thing they can do, but it, it works. It works best for the herbivores rather than what they can usually do. Speaking of speaking of herbivores, our uh, next dinosaur is Fukui Mimus, another very pretty looking dinosaur to add to the collection, and unfortunately it would just be able to just bob its head. And to make sure we have a Jurassic World, the game rep will have Armamata, because of course we need to have one of the Mosasaur hybrids in this. But now we're moving on from, what is this, Deluxe class? to Voyager class, which is usually just a tad bit, well, I guess with the Irritator being so short, anything looks bigger than it, but these guys are like very big dinosaurs. Like these guys are the first ones that you can properly call big. So uh, usually there's only two of these per wave, but I'm gonna add two more because there's no way I could limit myself to only two big options. Now there is always a Stegosaur in this line, so of course, we gotta include one of the Stegosaur hybrids. And the one I chose is Stegodeuce, because I have strong attachments to Stegodeuce before they nerfed it into Oblivion. Again, a lot of my dinosaurs got nerfed to Oblivion. Like, of course, this Stegosaur is pretty chunky, but Stegodeuce will be extra chunky. As for special attacks, I guess it would have, like, probably one of these. That's pretty much it. As for our carnivore, we're gonna use Sukotator. There were a lot of options for big Spinosaur hybrids, but the most, uh, the one that everyone remembers the most, I think, again, we, we gotta include some rare hybrid love, so we're gonna include the Sukotator. Now, Mattel, if they were gonna add two extra dinosaurs, it would be more carnivores. But I'm not Mattel. I'm gonna add two extra herbivores because there are some pretty awesome herbivore hybrids that I wanna show, shed some light on. Starting with Sarah Magnus as one of the big boys because this is like one of the, the best looking Ceratopsians. There, there really aren't, I'm really drawing a blank if there are any other Ceratopsian hybrids that look better than this and honestly not. This is honestly not even a hybrid actually. Is this our first Apex? I think this is our first Apex, whoa. Okay, yeah. Sarah Magnus being the first Apex and its gimmick will probably just be this, just like the, the Pentaceratops here. If that bad boy showed up, 
This was the biggest Ceratopsian at the time, so I feel like this would be the right size for a Ceramagnus. And our second apex being the Ankylos Lux. Now, this guy would only have one gimmick being the tail thing, and of course it would be a lot bigger than this dude. But on top of having that tail swingy, swingy gimmick, it would also be able to have like glowy effects, as it is called Ankylos Lux. So of course, Ankylos Lux has to have a glowing gimmick. Even though Ankylos Lux doesn't really glow, it's just very vibrant coloring, that's about it. But still, that would count as a gimmicky creature, and it would fit well with the massive biters, even though only one of them can bite. But now we get into our special line, which is usually consisted of dinosaurs that don't fit into any of the aforementioned lines, so they kind of just stand on their own as, as their own little one-off thing, including the T-Rex. And for this video, I'm going to pick three dinosaurs as the special line. That includes the T-Rex and two others that will be joining it. Starting off with another Mosasaur hybrid, the Dunkleosaurus. There really weren't that many Mosasaur releases because how many times can you resend the same Mosasaurus with a different paint job and whatnot? I mean, there really isn't that much you can do with them. I mean, I guess there is. They just haven't come up with anything yet. So I think it would be really cool if we got some more Mosasaur representation in the form of its hybrid, Dunkleosaurus. Now, obviously, the next option would be to include some other carnivore, like another thing to rival our T-Rex, right? Well, no. I'm gonna go in a completely different direction and throw in Spino Constrictor. I imagine it'd be kind of like the uh, the superposable Indoraptor, except be known as the Super Bendy Spino Constrictor, where you can just find a way to like it'll have like little segments in it, so you can like bend it around. I'm sure there's like some sort of toy snake out there. I, I would like I would just really like to see how Mattel could tackle a snake. And of course, for our token T-Rex, you all know I'm gonna pick the. Uh, the first Apex, Mortem Rex. And as for a feature, it would have a button that would make it roar, just like the Epic Roar T-Rex here. And another button that would help, it, like, I actually know, the roar button would coincide with its light up button, as it just makes sense to give a T -Rex, the, the Mortem Rex that kind of button. I'm not sure if I would be able to give it neck articulation, because it has a lot of spikes. It's basically Godzilla-saurus. So, yeah, that would be the T-Rex of the group. But wait, we're not done yet. We have to include playsets, because Mattel does make playsets, which is dinosaur, plus vehicle, or another dinosaur. But there's a slight problem with that. Jurassic World Live doesn't really have any vehicles to share. Which is where Jurassic World the game really shines, because oh my gosh, they have a lot more options. Say hello to all the buildings from Jurassic World the game. Mattel has given us plenty of vehicles to destroy, and plenty of people to eat, but they haven't really given us that many buildings for us to destroy as well, alongside the cars. So, let's make some. Okay, our first one, Power Generator, plus Utah Sinoraptor. It's like a simple Power Generator and a Utah Sinoraptor. Then we'll get a Maintenance Facility, and the Zungaya, because, again, we need a herbivore to help destroy some buildings as well. And of course, a heliport, I think we can pair this up with Dio Rajasaur, because we recently had a set with a helicopter and a Rajasaurus, so why not having the entire heliport and a Rajasaurus? But yeah, that's it. We've done it. We've made a fictional line of hybrids and apexes to add to a fictional Mattel-styled hybrid line. Are these hybrids you would personally like to see as toys, or would have you have swapped someone out for a different dinosaur? Because I do understand that while I do love Triostronix, it is a very ugly creature to look at, so maybe you would have liked it to get swapped out for something prettier, like Peritoris or Alanogamus. But yeah, tell me your thoughts in the comments below, and uh, if this video is popular, maybe I'll make a fictional secondary wave of these hybrid lines, and then you will see the hybrid you wanted in the line show up in this fictional line that will Probably never happen. Why do I waste time like this? Hey guys, thanks for watching the video from beginning to end. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel and join the Zen Reborn community. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye!